Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video with the BMW 1 Series um, on what is a particularly windy day today so uh, yeah it's, it's a bit billowy um, so you'll have to bear with me on that one I'm afraid there's nothing I can do about that however what we do want to do something about is a problem that I'm having with the uh, with this 1 Series uh, and that is that it's complaining about overheating so my wife was driving um, in the middle of the week she was driving one evening and um, the dash illuminated telling her that the there was a temperature problem with the car uh, i'll put a picture of that light up just so you can see what i'm on about um after about another 30 seconds that light then went red um, and the car went into limp mode so what she did was she pulled over uh, turned the engine off and then gave me a ring and i pulled the back everything was fine so what i did was i've um, let it cool down uh, had a little bit of a look around now i can see absolutely no evidence of any coolant leaks whatsoever um, anyway, uh, so there, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident that there is no leaks. Um, if I remove the cap, we will see inside that the coolant is absolutely full. Now on, on the one series, there should be like in this diagram just here, and um, there should be like a little pokey red stick with a ball on the end. And you can see in the middle of this little white float, which is floating in the coolant, um, this little red circle in the middle of it, that should be where the little stick pokes up. But mine snapped off some time ago, but I'm not particularly concerned because um, I can still see the float. And as you can see, there's plenty of coolant inside there, inside the header tank. So we haven't got a leak. Um, obviously, obviously, other things that it could be is things like water pump failure. Um, it's not unusual for that to happen on these cars as I described in the video where I replaced the water pump. Another problem we could have, uh, could have expected to see was perhaps the thermostat, but again, the thermostat was replaced at the same time as the water pump, and that was only around uh, six months ago or so. Um, that's not to say it hasn't failed, but the likelihood is slim. So, with all that in mind, my gut um, points towards this little thing here. Now, in here, what we have, it's called a temperature sensor. I believe that the one on the car has gone bad and is reporting um, an incorrect value to the car. Uh, and then the car believes that it's overheating. Now I'm hoping that changing this will rectify that problem. Um, no guarantees obviously, but the part isn't expensive anyway. This was less than 15 pounds. And this is a Febby Bilstein, uh, or Bilstein, should I say, um, part. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's of a reasonable quality. So anyway, enough of the chit chat. Let's get stuck into uh, fixing this problem. Okay, on this particular car, it's pretty straightforward to actually uh, remove the sensor. On a lot of cars, you find them on the uh, on the radiator or on the inlet pipe work to the radiator. But on this one, it is mounted on the cylinder head. And it is right here. This cable here goes down to it and my finger is literally touching it right now. It's quite hard to see in there, um, but you, you know you, the access is really really good but what i am going to do just to get all of this rubbish out of the way is i'm going to disconnect all of the things that are near it like the egr and all that sort of stuff um this little uh torx bolt here is just an e6 i'm going to remove that and then i'm going to move all of this out of the way just to give us better access so literally one bolt there and unplug all the little things that come off of this so i'll do that and then we'll get um good access to the socket and then we um, the sorry the the sensor uh, and you know and then we can uh, we can get it out so i'll bring it back in a second once i've done all that right so there you go as you can see what i've done i've disconnected all of these math um from the egr vacuum control and all that sort of stuff the activator for the swell flaps the fuel rail and obviously the um the uh, temperature sensor itself and if i just move that up 
there out the way as you can see we've got better access i've also disconnected this vacuum line this vacuum line sits down here and plugs into into there but i've disconnected it and again i can move that out of the way and there we go so we've got decent access in there now the other thing i've done i've taken the liberty of giving it a little clean around the sensor because once we take the sensor out obviously the water passages in the cylinder head will be exposed and i don't really want any dirt going in there because you know obviously dirt in the water passages is going to cause us issues because it will get stuck in somewhere we don't want it stuck and um cause us no water problem so i've taken the time just to give it a bit of a clean as best i can uh, prior to uh, withdrawing the um the sensor now the sensor itself um, is uh, 12 point uh, it's not six sided if I show you on the new one probably be easier you can see there it's, it's not six sided it's 12 point so you need to have a 12 point socket in order to get it off and it needs to be a deep one a, a deep socket will, will fit over the top a, sh a regular shallow socket will not so it needs to be a deep 12 point um, and 17 mil. so if I put that over there as you can see we've got plenty plenty of access and get a get a ratchet on there and we can whip it out absolutely no bother at all now one thing i do want to point out is obviously um the, the cooling system is full it's not empty so everything above this point will want to come out um you know if you want to if you want to go to the effort of draining the coolant below that level then obviously you can um but it'll take a little while and it's quite a lot what i'm going to do is i'm going to be fairly quick um i'm gonna i've got some workshop paper i'm gonna put that underneath to catch the vast majority of it um uh and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna remove the old one and quickly fit the new one in its place um you can obviously if you want to get a cork you know like a little cork or a little rubber bung bung it in there if you're gonna mess around in the meantime um you know if you want to test the sensor for example um yeah you know that's that's an option but what i'm going to do is i'm going to whip out the old one and refit the new one so what i'm going to do is get the brand new one ready to go in and uh yeah let's get ourselves ready get that one off and uh, get that one fitted and then uh, we should we should be good so i'll start off by getting some of my towel underneath underneath the egr Obviously, I don't want to. I don't want to block my access to the socket, um, but needs must. There's no two ways about it. I will lose some. I'll be very surprised if uh, none comes out. Okay, so there we go. I'd say that's about as good as it's going to get. So if I get my socket on there, get my ratchet there which was all around and then crack her off now when I get it out what I can do is just put my finger over the hole and that'll stop the most most of the coolant coming out okay so there was a little bit I did lose a tiny little bit not much I'm actually fairly happy with how well that went so here's the Here's the new one, and it's going to be a quick move the finger, get the sensor in. And this, I've actually done that pretty quickly, and I'm quite happy with how little coolant I've lost. Now, there isn't a torque setting in the manual for that. So what I've done is I've just given it a light, just a light tweak. As you can see, that is all the coolant I lost. I was pretty quick. Um, so we did all right there, really, really well, actually. I'm quite impressed with myself for that one. Uh, we can remove all of this now. And there we go. So if I dump that down there. Okay, so that is the Sensor stri uh, switched out. Um, yeah, I mean, it's hard to tell if there's anything, uh, you, you know, anything obvious with it. To be, to be perfectly honest, the um, the manual does actually say that um, the Haynes manual. This is it does actually say leave it to a BMW technician to 
um, carry out the test and the tears I couldn't actually find the test for. So with that in mind, I can't actually test it because I don't know what the values are supposed to be. Um, so w without the values, it, you know, I, I could be testing it and thinking it's okay and not really knowing. So I'm just gonna, uh, I'm gonna leave it. Um, as I said, it wasn't an expensive part. So if this doesn't fix the fault, uh, you know, I'm not gonna lose sleep about it. I just need to, I, I just need to figure out what the actual problem is. Anyway, right, with that in mind, that's all done. What we need to do now, get all of these cables, put back where they go, the vacuum line, um, all plug back in and then uh, we can fire up the car, take it for a test drive. Okay, so I've uh, I've just taken the car for a spin. I did quite a long, you know, quite a long drive with it, probably about 25 miles. Um, I went down to the next town and back, um, which was actually further than the car went the other day when, uh, when it actually broke down. Um, the car hasn't complained about overheating at all. And one other thing, that I've, uh, I've noticed, and I did forget to mention earlier on, was um, another symptom of it during its breakdown was that the fan, which is on, which is an electric fan, was absolutely gunning it at max chat. Now, obviously, being an electric fan, the coolant temperature switch plays a role in that fan turning on and off, etc. Uh, and obviously, monitoring the speed and it, uh, you know, um, because when the fan comes on at at a higher temperature, the fan um, spins, cools the coolant in the radiator to a level whereby the um, fan will turn off. Um, but in the uh, in the case of the breakdown, it was absolutely flying. Uh, it, it sounded like a Hercules, but it's not. Um, you know, it's not activating now. And uh, yeah, I uh, I think we can call that a fix. So there we go. Um, it's always nice when you have these little uh, these little issues that can get fixed for very very little money, which in this case was, wasn't even fifteen pounds. Um, and yeah, happy to say that the car's back in action. So yeah, if you uh, if you have a very very similar similar issue whereby the car thinks it's overheating, but you can see absolutely no evidence of any coolant loss or any problems, um, particularly if you've had a recent water pump or thermostat, then I would look at your uh, your coolant temperature switch. So anyway, I'm going to end that uh, this video here. I hope you enjoyed it guys if it helped you out let me know in the comments below and i'll see you all again for the next video take care bye bye now